passed away. We wanted men. Jason, are you hung over really bad this morning? <laughs> no, I am not. Just tired? Just tired. It was a long day. Yeah, it was an amazing day, dude. Yesterday was great. We had our winter social in the uh, Georgia Alliance Club last night. And yeah. uh, there was also a meet a swap meet in the morning. Uh, the Martin swap meet. Martin uh, Jared does a swap meet in Powder Springs. So there was that yesterday. And then we had the meetup, and I posted a little pre-party at my house. We had a few people, a couple of guys show up for that. Um, so it was just nonstop Star Wars, and we didn't – what I didn't get home till – well, I didn't get to bed until after midnight. So and just really waking up and on my only second cup of coffee this morning. So we'll, it'll probably be a rough show, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Way to set the bar. <laughs> I'm setting it really, really low today. Yeah. Now I thought I'd be in bed by, you know, two in the morning. And when I got into bed at 1130, I was like, yes, jackpot. Yeah. Dude, it was so much fun. Uh, we just, from now on, whenever, I, whenever you have a party, Penny needs to show up with the, with the uh, karaoke karaoke machine. And we just need to go for it. Cause it's fun. Even though it nobody was. does it. If as long as me and you have fun with it, who cares? And as long as people are having fun watching us be idiots, who right. cares? I think that's what carry the role of karaoke is. You're either, you know, if you're not going to participate, you at least watch and get drunk and have fun and make yeah. fun of the people making fun. So, and I've also learned that, you know, no matter how bad I suck, that people are enjoying it. So just keep going. Yep. Don't, it's really not about them. It's about you. If you're having fun, forget the rest. Right. Yeah. Cause I did a uh, scary where she picked a song and she's like, all right, I'm going to, back you way down because this song is really high you know and next thing you know queen comes up i was like oh crap yeah he, she put on uh i'll be there for you by the Rembrandts, the theme for the friends theme yes. song and and so that's a higher range than i go mm -hmm. it's tough to hit some of those high notes I'll be here for you. Well, my, did voice you... <laughs> my voice doesn't even go that high this morning <laughs> Did you at least hear us clapping because we tried doing the clap, but we were in yes. too far away. Yeah, I heard it. <laughs> yes, yeah, such a good night. But it all started at a swap meet, and I got up at five in the morning, and I just was five, and five until five thirty until about four. I was just getting ready for the winter social, so I didn't have time to go to the swap meet. I didn't have time to do your pre-party. So uh, tell me what was what was that like? The swap meet, I thought we, it just, those things just keep getting better and better uh, each month. They, uh, Martin said he had like 50 people there. Uh, vendors? Vendors there. And they're, they're getting better. I think they're starting like that one guy that we complained about that looked like he just robbed a target. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see him there. Mandy did say she saw somebody that kind of maybe looked like they robbed the target. Um, but I didn't, I don't know. I, it, when I got there, we got there a little bit after 10 and I'm like, all right, my drop dead. I, we got to be out of here by noon. So I'm just got blinders on and I'm just, I'm racing through it because, you know, I don't, I didn't, I didn't I only had two hours. Um, and plus, you know, it's, it's a social thing. So on top of trying to look at toys, you're trying to talk to friends and uh, you know, it was a very hectic uh, meet a, or swap meet for me, but it was a good one because they had a lot of, you know, had a lot of good vendors uh a lot of the the normal guys were there had a couple of new guys uh they had a toy they had a marine there for toys for tots and uh his booth had a bunch of micro collection or micro uh machine stuff and i texted you about it and, yep. and you're just like holy shit and i know when you curse you're serious you're like you're you know so i, I it looks so good like i've mentioned this before micro machines is not something people cared about so a lot of the times you'll see the cards that are bent and the bubbles are smashed. 
because it's not the vintage stuff. Right. And, and this guy, and all so that, yeah. Yeah. All of that stuff looked good. Yep. So, and I, I you know, I, I called you and you're like, I don't have time to talk. I'm like, you will talk to me now. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you know, I know when you were like, Oh my God, that you're serious about it. So, you know, I picked, you know, pick those up for you. And I picked up a little, I picked up the FET. It was the FET and the, I think it's a Greedo and somebody else, the little heads for myself. But yeah, I'm the trying. transforming play sets. You had a yeah. FET, Akbar, and the Gamorian. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying not to stomp on your toes, but when it comes to FET and Wampa, I'm going to have to stomp on them a little bit. That's all good. <laughs> and then I, I picked up a Lego Ghost. So that you was pretty did. That was pretty freaking exciting. After three years. You're right. Um, I knew the guy had had it because I talked to him the last meetup and I think like a week or two later he had picked it up and um, we'd messaged for a couple of months about it. And he, he was there today or there yesterday. And, and I called my wife over and I'm like, I need you to, to come with me. And she's like, why? What would you find? I said, there's Legos over there. And she goes, crap. Cause she knew exactly what I was talking about. And uh, she was just like, it just the perfect storm because we refinanced the house. So we had a little bit of extra money and that thing was available and it's Christmas time. So she was just, just do it. Just, just buy it. So you can finally shut up about it. So right. I got, yeah, I got the ghost and the phantom. And that's part of the reason why I didn't get to bed till midnight last night is I got home and I built the phantom. because I just had to come down. I needed to relax <laughs> for a few minutes and um, finish the phantom off. So probably so it was open in the box but it wasn't put together right so they had op- they put it all together to make sure the pieces were there and then replaced all the pieces that were missing and uh so the, and then they took it apart with the instructions it had to all the all the many figs and all the pieces yeah they were bas- basically in ziploc bags with the instructions there's a canaan mini fig that's worth more it's either the black haired or the brown haired, and I can't remember which one, but there is a Canaan variant that's worth more money. Really? I'll yeah, have to look. You look into it. I should look into Harrison's ghost and see which Canaan he has. Yeah. Does he has the Phantom too or just the ghost? He's got the ghost. Right. So no Phantom. No, I, I don't know if he has got I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> I don't know. We don't know. And he's not here it's, for me to ask. So right ask and uh shoot what else did i I think that's it i picked up a christmas present for my wife but that was another that was a thing that i'd set up before and the guy was going to be there so i bought it for for that for from him she went inside to the huh they have a lot of black series there they had one guy the one guy that you told me about that kind of had everything open uh or the marvel you know like they were just in the blisters he was there uh, what about vintage collection dude i didn't seriously i didn't <laughs> once i got the ghost i was too busy running around uh, okay above just my trying head to paint like a, a picture for the audience to oh. see what was there uh, but yeah um shoot adam was there adam thorn was there he always has a good selection of just random vintage stuff yeah. um i think there's always a lot of marvel there was a, a lego guy there was a couple of pops guys which i was surprised about because when we tried selling our pops there, we didn't do really well. So maybe the pop, I'm hoping the pops doesn't, you know, in, infiltrate that, that meetup, but they might. <laughs> uh, that viral. That viral, <laughs> the viral of the pops. It that was, variant of collecting. <laughs> yes, dude. I'm so glad I'm out of those things. Because now with the book of Boba Fett coming out, there's like a new Boba Fett figure every week. Oh, he has his helmet on. Oh, he's in this. Oh, he's, you know, they he painted himself. Oh, he's got a throne. <laughs> this one, he's half removed his helmet so you can see the bottom half of his face. Exactly. Yeah, it's, the, the meetups, are they were just, they were really good. Um, it, it's always a good mix of things out there. You, you know, you asked me to describe it. Now I'm trying to remember. I need to start remembering stuff better, but. Um, it's all good. Yeah. They're just, they're good. It's, it's a good, he does it right. It's every two months and it's just a good mix of, of things. It's just a good mix of things. It's a good mix of people. Uh, we're actually going to miss the one in February, which, you know, I'm kind of a little upset about, but I'm going to be seeing the crew of Chewbacca. So I'll be all right. Yeah. I'll be in New Orleans. talking about that for a while. Yeah. You'll have so, to take video of that. Dude, I can't wait for that. It's, it'll be a fun trip. Did he have the ice cream truck or any of the food trucks that he wanted? I was a little disappointed about that because he did have a guy with 
a roller grill and hot dogs, which I don't know how much the guy was charging for hot dogs because I didn't look because I didn't want roller dog hot roller grill hot dogs, but uh, you know it's better than nothing. Yeah, exactly. I um I thought he was gonna have a guy at least with a grill or something that uh but you know it's better it's it's better than nothing and it keeps people around uh so yeah because you lose people at lunchtime oh yeah they disappear. it was yeah we come back yeah exactly i mean there's a pizza place right there but i don't see you know i don't see anybody buying the pizza hut i don't know why people don't go to pizza hut to get a pizza but they don't because it's it's pizza hut <laughs> like they don't make the dough there's really? been times when you go to Pizza Hut and be like, can I get a large pizza? Oh, we're out of large. Really? Because they make the dough somewhere else and then they come kind of flat and ready to go. They don't toss the dough in the air in, in Pizza Huts. That's ridiculous. So that's why I'm I'm okay not eating Pizza Hut. Yeah. I will um, eat Pizza Hut when because it's cheap. Because you can get like a pizza for five bucks. But now that you say that about the dough, man, it's true. I could tell there's always a difference in Pizza Hut dough. I do like their stuffed crust, but mm-hmm. at the same time, I'll just do, I guess, a frozen DiGiorno pizza. Yeah. Stuffed crust, if I wanted it. It tastes better for me. I don't know. Whatever. This is a weird conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Star Wars. I, I do buy pizza for the Star Wars meetup so that we can tie it back into Star yeah, okay, Wars. Okay, there we go. All right, let's keep going with it then. <laughs> Um, but. what else? It was just it. I don't know. I enjoy those meetups because, and, and it's the same thing. Even a bad toy show is a good toy show because you're you're there with friends. So fifty vendors is nor, more uh, more than normal. Would yes. you say there was more people attending, or were there more vendors than people? I was a good. There was a lot of people there. I thought there was a lot of people there. Uh, the parking lot was full. It's not like the one where we did uh, on Easter weekend or spring break weekend yeah. um, at the beginning of the year where nobody was there. I think everybody yeah. walked away happy. Oh, good. Yeah. And the thing I like about that meetup, that swap meet, is you get a good mix of uh, – it's like a yard sale. So you, you get a good mix of professionals, and you get people that just – I got a lot of crap. I got to sell it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and and – Cause I don't think he charges. And if he does charge, it's like 10 bucks to set up. And that's more of a commitment fee just to make sure that you've bought in a little bit. Right. So just leave them. But it's, it's also good because every time it's a grab bag, you don't know what you're going to get. It's not, you'll, you might have the same couple vendors every time, but it's not cookie cutter. Like it's the exact same show. I don't need to go. Cause it just went two months ago. You never right. know. There's more people who are coming. There's different people, like you're saying. So it's it's worth our time. Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd say about half the vendors are regulars. And then the other half are people that just let me go set up, see if I can sell some stuff. Yeah. So, That's cool. Yeah. How was your week? Um, it was all in preparation for the winter social. I didn't pick anything up. Uh it was just cleaning and prepping food and making sure I had this and that. And so, yeah, that was my week. No. How was your Thanksgiving? Cause you, you, I saw, you know, we posted the picture of you in the, in the Turkey suit, but was yes. Thanksgiving good. Thanksgiving was good. My wife came back from Florida, like at 11 o'clock at night on Wednesday. So I got up early. I put in the Turkey. I made the mashed potatoes. I made an apple pie, which was amazing. Cause I had picked, when I was up in New York in September, I had picked different apples. There's, you know, sweet apples. There's tart apples. Um, there's a whole scale of different flavors. So I bought a bunch of apples. And when I got back to, to Georgia, I started to cut them up and stuff. And then I froze them. And so I saved one for Thanksgiving, one for Christmas. And it was amazing. I'm so proud of my apple pie. <laughs> But yeah, awesome. we had my sister-in-law who came over, and then the following Friday, the following day, we went down to um, Jackson Lake and did a whole in-law thing. My, all my in-laws were upset that I wasn't wearing the turkey, and I'm like, I was sweating and cooking in that thing last week. You guys don't want me in that thing. <laughs> but they were disappointed, so 
Yeah, that was the bad part about last night is it was such a beautiful night. Everybody had on ugly sweaters and sweating. I showed up in shorts and a T-shirt. And people are like, look at you in shorts. I said, dude, it's 70 degrees outside. Why wouldn't yeah. I wear shorts? <laughs> right. I actually turned the AC on at one point because it was just so hot. I We have a house fan that kind of pulls in. When you have your windows open, it pulls the air in from the outside and it shoots it up to the attic. And I, it wasn't working. It wasn't bringing in enough cool heat. Uh, cool heat cool air so i uh, turned on the ec just mm -hmm. to try to knock the temperature down a few degrees it was getting warm and right. people were moving from like the upstairs down to the downstairs because the downstairs would be cooler until everyone got there and it got hotter so then everyone went upstairs everyone got their steps in i have a, an awkward driveway that's really really steep so people were getting their steps in you were offering for five bucks to rally people up up the driveway man yeah, it's my new service called Uber. Well, I'll just take you from the bottom of the uh, driveway up to the top for five bucks. It's a simple little thing, a simple mm -hmm. side business I got going. Yeah. So you didn't pick anything up over Thanksgiving? No. 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 I'm sorry. I don't want to get too far into the meetup conversation because we'll sure. get into that in a second. Yeah. Okay, just, hold it, off. Yeah. I, I have... want to get it. I want to get into it. Don't get me wrong. But Did you pick um, up anything else? Because I, I, I do have some news. Yeah, let me. Um, well, I'll, I'll go through what I picked up over Thanksgiving, and then I could talk about the. Uh, we'll talk about the meetup. I'll do that during the meetup. But um, we went. Well, we went up to um, Helen. My in laws have a have a cabin. I call it a cabin. It's a freaking house um, up near Helen, and we walked into this one. We go antiquing whenever because we only go up there every couple yeah. of months, so we have our normal stops because. They're wanting to work on their house and we go up there to relax. So we normally take off and go hit a, a couple of uh, flea markets and stuff. So there was a, a up in Franklin, there was an old school uh, movie theater. So we wanted to go see Ghostbusters in an old school, you know, but you walk in this the movie theater and the, the um, concession stand is like two stalls and it's little bitty. you you walk in and you're like, Am I, what, that I just walk into because it's like a yeah. quarter of the size of a normal concession stand. So we uh, saw Ghostbusters up there and then we uh, we stopped in a convenience store, not a convenience, a, a antique mall. And we're around in the corner and there's a bunch of star of vintage Star Wars stuff. So I picked up a couple of the, van, the ripcord vans. Oh, wow. Yeah. Picked up a couple of those and then they had a, a 12 inch um, R2D2. And it had the Death Star plans. I was like, oh, that's cool. And Mandy was like, you're buying that. I, said, I, was like, I don't I don't need that. She goes, you're buying it because if you don't buy it, I'm buying it for you. So I got the death, the little 12 inch R2D2 with the Death Star plans in it. Very cool. Yeah. The vans don't have the rip cords and it looks like somebody would they displayed them because one side's really washed out and the other side, it looks really good. So I think they displayed them and, you know, you yeah. can tell how they displayed them. But uh, is it the brown one and the white man? Yeah, the black and the, the Darth Vader and the stormtrooper. I don't know. Okay. So it's the darker one. Yeah. Somebody was saying, yeah, Tony was saying that the white one, if it pops up or something weird, has some kind of weird, it's like a Canadian variant. Oh. I don't know. I hadn't, I'm just now thinking about it and they're over there and I haven't looked yet. I'll have to check that out later. Report yeah. back. <laughs> That's what Mandy's like. Oh my god! Because when we did the uh, our meetup, we before we did our little thing, we, you know, you're cleaning the house and we're kind of rushing to get everything done because she's like, "I want to do Christmas." Like, really, you want to put Christmas up on Friday night at seven o'clock at night? So we ended up getting as you know as much as we could until like work till like ten o'clock last on um, Friday night to get Christmas up. Yeah. And this morning she's just like, "I'm so sore." well you shouldn't have bust your ass on friday to do christmas but yeah i was putting up christmas thanksgiving week because like i said my wife was in florida so i was just doing all that stuff to try to get ready for the more that i could do in advance of the winter social the less i'd have to do last minute running around right so i was doing christmas like that week yeah it, it, it oh yeah it's amazing how you know you plan you plan you plan and then it's just boom done yep but um, I also, I, I got the, my, my Galactic Heroes Ezra, I got that in. And, oh, yeah, uh, that, how did it turn it, out? It turned out really cool. It's, um, when I looked at it, the arms are put on backwards. So whoever put the arms on, like, put the right arm on the right, you know, left arm and left arm on the, 
because I, right. I didn't yeah. notice it until I started comparing it. And so the arms are put on backwards and then it's got a, like a 25 on the face. So, and there's no markings on it except for the 25. So it's yeah. a, it's a cool looking, it's definitely a cool piece to have compared to when you compare it to the other one. So it's, it's a little rarer. So it's no, you could tell it's not something somebody got bored on there and put it on their, did it while they were sitting on their bench you know, I've got extra stuff, so I'm just going to make something and sell it to these stupid Americans. <laughs> <laughs> so that's We're it. The wiser. No, yeah. So, <laughs> I did. Cool. Oh, and then I also kind of made you mad because I stuck it on your toes for the um, Action Fleet stuff. I picked up a. Oh, it's all good. An Action Fleet um, sample, which is cool for me, and it's got a wampa in it. It's like a wampa the Hoth cave or something. So it kind of checks off a few pieces that I wanted because I've always yeah. wanted something with a write off sample. And so it's a write off. It's a production sample, but then it's got the write off on the back of it. Uh, I'll have that in a, in a little bit. Pick that up in, from Japan or China or something. You told me last night. You were like, I, I picked up that thing, a deal or no deal. And I go, what thing? You go, you know. And I'm just like so tired. <laughs> I don't know though. I didn't say anything. It took a couple minutes as my brain loaded information mm -hmm. to come to the to the conversation. And be like, oh wait, oh oh yeah, the action fleet thing. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. I'm on board now. Yeah, you're like, well, at least I know where it's at, and when I'm ready, if you're you're ready to sell it, I'm ready to buy it. Yep. Yeah, that dart that um Kylo Ren thing you got's pretty cool. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that did come the week of Thanksgiving. So there's there's a pickup, I guess. Right. But I had with, mentioned it before. Right. It, it's a cool looking piece, but but what I don't like about those is how are you gonna display them? Closed or open? Yes. Yeah. I just decided to display it open so you can see it, see the inside. It's just Kylo Ren. Everyone knows what Ky Kylo Ren looks like. And so I just opened it up. It's with Starkiller base with the platform on the backside that leads out to the ice planet itself. It's got Ray, who's it's the Ray at the end of the movie of The Force Awakens climbing the steps. So it just doesn't make sense why they would make that Ray for this playset. But they never made that the Ray they never included in any of the other um, packaging. So this is exclusive to the set. So it's just another kind of early prototype nice and it got canceled because of lack of sales i also read somewhere that the rumor was that they changed the laws of um the i gotta say how do i say this it's, it's the, some of the toy laws changed i mm -hmm. don't know if the pieces were too small or what it doesn't make sense because i mean they still include blasters which is just as small as a micro machine figure so I, I don't know. I think it's just due to lack of poor sales. They decided to cancel it. Yeah. Yeah, well, we could get into the... Uh, dude, I don't even know if I want to get into this. Into what? Uh, no, just another Hasbro discussion. Oh. Because we had a pretty interesting discussion. I don't even know if we could discuss this uh, last night with people, with a certain person about how Hasbro and Star Wars is Lucas films kind of got Hasbro over a barrel right now. Yeah. That's just what my gut is, is that it's not Hasbro's fault. I mean, they're doing the best that they can with what they have, but the rumor was that Hasbro was given Disney and Lucas film 20% of everything. They since renegotiated and I'm not and based on what they've been making so far, I don't see Hasbro getting any ground, so to speak, and, and getting, you know, like 15 to 18% licensing on, on figures. I think it's gone up, if anything, because mm -hmm. it is the gold standard and we're still getting more repacks and repaints and things like that. So, I mean, where am I going with this? I don't, I think we're just, I don't know how far to go with it right now, but. I just it was an interesting conversation and it seems like it confirmed everything that we've talked about how that, uh, you know, Hasbro's looking at it like I can put this money into G.I. Joe or Transformers and oh, absolutely um, stuff that I own in versus Star Wars, because, you know, I, if I got to give Lucasfilm 20 percent, why the hell am I going to make a new figure when I can throw paint on another one on an existing figure and still make money? 
you know um, yeah yeah that's i mean just to take it to um something else theme parks that's what these theme parks are starting to do disney uh licenses the twilight zone for their twilight zone tower of terror they don't own that and so it's easy for them to convert that to guardians of the galaxy at disneyland because they own that ip everything they make you know every ticket sale they don't have to pay cbs to use the twilight zone out in disneyland but they do at uh hollywood studios so it just makes sense from a corporate point of view you know we have all this great ip why are we giving someone else money to make something off of their ip when we have you know guardians of the galaxy and so right. just bringing that to hasbro you know why are we spending so much money on star wars when we own gi joe and we own transformers and power rangers and we can do we get 100 percent versus 80 to 85 you know 75 percent profit off of that right it just makes sense so from a corporate point of view exactly which i i don't blame hasbro for thinking about it and it, it sucks as a as a consumer but when you look at it from a corporate you you kind of you look at it with a different light and you, then you can't blame hasbro for being for messing with star wars or not caring yeah. about star wars right and and people, I guess I need to pay closer attention to, to Marvel Legends because I've been told over and over again that they recycle a lot. But from the outside point of view, like it looks like every figure is a new figure. Right. Like I don't know what they're talking about. So I need to, I probably should do some research this week just to try to dive into that a little bit and see, you know, I if you're making a new Fantastic Four, Mr. Fantastic figure, do you use the same body from a couple of years ago? Um, I know they sculpt new heads. Uh, as long yeah. as it's some sort of comic accurate depiction of Mr. Mr. Fantastic and it's not a carbonized metallic version, you know, like, is there anything to complain about? Right. And and I, like I said a couple of weeks ago, I would be totally cool if they were using parts, pieces, parts, and, you know, coming up with a new figure, even though you could look at it and maybe be like, all right, these arms came from this guy. And these legs came from this guy, and this is another torso. But I don't know why they're not doing that. With maybe that it's another thing Lucasfilm has got with them that they don't want them doing that, like they did with Marvel. Maybe for me, I prefer them doing the snowed version of the Mandalorian covered in snow, the muddied version of the Mandalorian covered in mud, because they're using the same mold. It's just a different paint application than mm -hmm. a carbonized version of the Mandalorian, which we've never seen on screen. Right. I mean, to me, that's better than the carbonized stuff, the the credit collection stuff. So that's the kind of stuff I probably shouldn't complain about another repack if it's a creative repack. Right. No, that makes sense. I, I, and I get it. And it is, like you said, it is something that we saw on screen. And they did, uh, you know, with the spiders, you get a, the snow guy, but then you also get spiders. And this one comes with Grogu with a different mold of Grogu, which is yeah. easy as hell to mold a Grogu because he's, you know, an inch tall uh but yeah i mean you, you know it does make sense because like marvel legends how hard is it to redo a head it's it's not that hard to redo a head versus a whole body right <sighs> and then this is the day we're recording the day before the rancor ends the whole Haslab thing and it's at over five thousand backers at this point they've regained the ground that they lost and the typical rule of thumb with these Kickstarter programs is that if you have 50% backing by the last day, you're going to get fully funded. That's not, that's not always the case, but the typical understanding is that's, that's what's going to happen. And I think for the Rancor, it's going to go, this is going to get released the day after. So that's my prediction. We'll see if I'm right or wrong. Again, what do I know? <laughs> I say that every show don't listen to me i didn't buy the ahsoka yeah i i i really shoot i don't know how to feel about that rancor i think that with the rancor keeper it, it gained the ground but yeah i totally think that they're going to just keep pushing it back and oh we got an, we only need another thousand or oh we only need you know two more thousand people to, to fund this uh, i don't think it'll hit any stretch goals but what are you gonna you know yeah i, I, I think it's, yeah i don't think it's gonna hit the eleven thousand for the gamorian Right. I think what they needed to do just for grins and giggles is just be like, all right, we're just giving you, you you've given you guys everything for 350 and just be done with it. 
Yeah, if it goes to eleven thousand, it's going to be the reseller saying, "No oh, crap, it's going. I better buy a couple for myself and sell it later." Right. But because I yeah, I'm kind of curious what's going to happen with the Razor Crest because I know there's a lot of people that said, "Screw it, we're going to buy a pallet of them." Because of what happened with the uh, sale barge. Yeah. Because the sale barge is hitting like 2K right now. Yeah, I sold too early in the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I Dude, have you made your money back. Yeah. And I was able to get a couple pieces that I wanted. So, yeah. You, you, you bought one, bought two, and paid for one. So, yeah. But basically, you got yours for free. So, I wouldn't feel too bad about that. No, nope, I don't. I guess that's yeah. it on the Wampa. I mean, I'm not on Wampa on the Rancor. I, I don't. I don't know how to. I think it'll get funded, but yeah, it, it'll be a last ditch effort. And I think Hasbro will be like, "Yay, we funded it." It's too big to fail, I guess. Yeah, and that's why they threw Malachi, Kiki, Malachi, Maluki, Malachi, the Rancor keeper. Right. I mean, Which, it was a smart move on their part. Yeah, I mean, there's probably so many panicked meetings that week. Oh crap, we're losing things. We can't. You know that it's going to be a failure for Lucasfilm and Disney. It's going to be a failure for the fans. It's going to be a failure for Hasbro. Maybe the best thing to do is to let it fail so they don't force things. We think you want this. No, listen to the fans and hear what they want you to make. Right. Yeah, and plus, I there again, and I think they, there's there's too many things going on because they've got the the GI Joe thing that the jet and the proton pack and the rancor all at $400. And then there's also, I think super sevens doing a, uh, the turtles van and that's like 500 bucks. So you've got like four or five awesome things going on right now. So people are having to pick and choose. There's just too much uh, going on. And I was telling somebody last night, I'm not even a ghostbusters fan, but if I had $400 to blow on something, it'd be that proton pack. Yeah. Cause that proton pack just keeps getting better and better. Now they're, uh they're showing it comes apart like it did in in the the new movie because you know you could take it apart like because there's a part in a new movie where she's working on a proton pack and she takes it apart and it now the next day they're showing oh we reached this stretch gold the proton pack will come apart and it's i'm sorry you could tell that hasbro is putting their money where their mouth you know putting their money in their own ips versus the star wars stuff well, I mean, what I want to see out of the HasLab, I don't know if we've talked about this. I'm tired of the super expensive pieces. Right. Everything is just a couple hundred bucks, anywhere between 300 to 700 bucks. It's just so expensive. It's supposed to be the stuff of our dreams, but some of the things that I dream about are some of the smaller stuff. Mm-hmm. There are so many Cantina patrons that would never be made in the black series line because they're not popular enough um they'll sit on store shelves hasbro's afraid to make them uh let's use moff tech which is the big furry guy with the he's the white furry guy with the two black i think this is right two black eyes and then little almost like cylinders for mouth uh-huh. he's in the background he's in it for a couple seconds you know hasbro's never going to make that that black series figure so why not just say, hey, it's 30 bucks. If we get 10,000 backers, it's going to go into production. Right. And it's going to go. You know, if it's $100,000 to make the molds, you know, you, you, what, you need about four or 5,000 people to back it to, to break even maybe. Mm-hmm. So then you're making your money when you're hitting that 10 or to 15,000 backers. You, you're going to have enough people um, back this thing. And, and it's, like I said, smaller, it's more affordable. Um, and Hasbro's never going to make it. Right. It doesn't need to be the sale barge. It could be some figure, or it could be a, a, a selection of vintage collection figures. Maybe it's five vintage collection figures with card backs, unpunched. I mean, that right there would sell it. Right. For a hundred bucks. It, yeah. You get and, five figures. And if you're going to do like the Cantina creatures, that's when you can recycle parts because nobody's going to give a crap that you recycled parts on a figure that you see in three seconds in a in a uh in a scene sure as long as you do it right you, for jedis you could do that and i mentioned this before you know they all have robes and they all have for the most part two arms two legs right recycle those pieces new head new arms different color lightsabers so i mean there's so much they can do they got to think outside of the expensive box right and give us the things that we want 
listen yeah. to us. Well, I mean, because when they throw a figure, a thirty dollar figure on the Haslab, not Haslab on Hasbro Pulse, that stuff sells out in minutes. Yeah. So I think you're onto something, man. Maybe we need to write Hasbro. Maybe I think that's what they need to start doing, and, and get away because Black Series is very limiting. People have said this all all throughout the week. Just the size and scale. You can't have a Falcon. It's very tough to have like a playset um, for like the Cantina. Like, and how are you going to fill the Cantina? You know, if you do, you would have to do just like the Millennium Falcon co- cockpit, like you like you mentioned right last week. You have to have something small like that. But yeah, I, I think the the rank car is going to go. Um, we'll see tomorrow. Right. Yeah, because you were just saying the Cantina. The Cantina. I've got a Cantina that's for made Galactic Hero size, and it's huge. It takes up a whole coffee table. Right. And so that's little bitty figures, two inch figures. Blow that up for three point seven five. That's going to be four or five times bigger and then for the black series that's going to take up a room right but it is what it is like they could make the bar from the cantina with the bartender where were where were where were were? i'm saying that wrong make that for a hundred bucks yeah but make it an addition to the bar that you already have right yeah people would buy it I saw I saw one of the bars uh, last night, the the showdown yesterday. Mm-hmm. They guy was wanting 150 bucks for it. Yeah, I don't mm-hmm. know if that's a good price or not. Yeah, it is. I mean, it was sold for like 110, so a 40 dollar okay. markup at this point is not too bad. Then I'm sure if you talked him down, if you offered him 110 or offered, you know, tried to get his money out back out of it, he'd be good. Yeah. Cause I know there was a lot of people there last night or at the meetup that I was talking to that was like, I'm just trying to get my money back. I've got too much crap. I've bought too much crap. And I just, I need to get my money back because I don't have room. It's a common um, problem we're dealing with. Right. <laughs> I'm running out of room. Yeah. Well, that's why if I can't display it, I don't keep it. Yeah. Well, I'm running out of room. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all running out of room. <laughs> There again, you don't you don't realize how big your collection is until you bring somebody in and you're like, oh, wait a minute, there's war. Right. <laughs> I'm looking at my collection like, well, where would I add? Maybe I'll hang it from the ceiling. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> so. Yeah. And last night I'm banging. You got that Millennium Falcon popcorn bucket up in the air and I banged my head on it a couple of times. And our buddy Lucas was like, oh, I did that, too. Don't worry. Yeah, typically the gong droid is there, so you have to walk around the gong droid and the Falcon. Mm-hmm. But I needed to create more room in the uh, hallway there so people could see things. Right. I should have taken the Falcon down, but whatever. Yeah, it's fine, dude. Don't worry yeah. about it. Maybe it knocked some sense into you guys. It did. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I guess we can get on with the uh, the meetup, man, or the SWAT, the winter social. Um, are, you, are you done bitching about Hasbro? I'm done. I just real quick, the book <laughs> yes. of Boba will be seven episodes. Directors include John Favreau, Bryce Dallas Howard, Dave Filoni, Steph Green, and Kevin Tancherion. I hadn't heard that name before. I haven't heard that name before. Um, I thought Robert Rodriguez was directing one. Um, he wasn't announced, and I wouldn't be surprised if he does because he's one of the showrunners and was a passionate force behind that, and he directed The Tragedy, right. which is the big Boba Fett return episode in The Mandalorian Season 2. So I would expect him to come back. Right. But we'll see. Yeah, and I'm, I'm also, I've heard a lot of people complaining that all we know on this show is we know Boba and we know Finnick Shan. That's all we know about this show. So leave it. it huh? I love that. I yeah. love surprises. So I can't wait for uh, uh, Facebook to spoil everything for me by the time I get home. Yeah, I'll well, just stay off I'll Facebook. But when is the twenty ninth? Yeah, the, there's rumors like there's a flashback to like Empire Strikes Back time, so they kind of fill in some of that backstory. I, I I could totally see them doing that, and I know that on one of the piece one of the. Uh, uh teasers they actually show the slave one and you have Phoenix Shan and you have Boba Fett and they're sort of in the same hangar from a throwback as the sail barge. Mm-hmm. But then when I look at Boba Fett, he's in his still in his uh sand person outfit. He's not in a Boba Fett armor yet. So I'm kind of curious how that 
comes together. Interesting. Maybe that's where he parks and he goes back to Jabba's palace and takes his ship back. Right. I, I would imagine that has to happen at some point. If you do the math, he's got, you know, the last we saw him, he's in the Sarlacc. And then the next time we see him, he's got the slave one on the Mandalorian. At some point, he has to go back and get it. Right. I, I didn't that think about that part. So that makes sense. Yeah. So he had it parked in Jabba's palace somewhere. Yeah. So what, like 20 more days? You're not even that? Yeah. Oh, a little bit over 20 days. 29th. Oh, and before we go any further, I got to tell all the UGA fans, sorry. Alabama kicked your butt. Do we have any UGA fans? I don't know. I know Chad, uh, Chance listens. So, uh-huh. sorry, Chance. <laughs> he was. I talked to him yesterday at the swap meet, and I'm like, when do you close the store today? He's like, the store closes at 7. I'm leaving at 3.30 because I'm not watching that game on my phone and we have too many little kids that don't want to hear me curse every five minutes. Man, I, I care less about, I could care less. So wait, I couldn't care less. I don't care about the uh, sec stuff. Mm-hmm. That is another world down here that I'm just not familiar with. And I have no passion for, I don't want to take it away from anyone, but it's right. just like, I don't know. It just doesn't anyways. Anyway, moving yeah. on yeah you, you had to grow up in college football town yes. man yes because i know I like did. the northeast people don't give a crap about college football no uh, it's college basketball yeah and it's real football or nfl yep yeah but anyway let's get on to our winter social okay let's get it, on with it yeah uh, did fun? Yeah, I did. It was a great time. I love the winter social. I love our socials, the winter and the summer social. Uh, the winter is a little bit uh, nicer to me or because it's, it's a holiday time and it gets you in the in the Christmas spirit because we do, a, you know, do the gift exchange. Uh, people will bring presents for other people. And um, so it just it's it gets me in the holiday spirit. And yeah, yeah I love the winter social. I had a great time. You guys did. Good. You guys always, you, you know, like I say, there ain't no party like a Wasoka party. I stole it from you, but <laughs> it's the truth. You guys bring it, man. We do. Yeah, we were um that morning. We we're like, wait, do we have enough food? <laughs> and my, my wife went and got some veggie trays and cheese and crackers. And my mom came home with more cookies. And we we're just like, <sighs> well, it's one of our parties. We have too much food. We're going to be eating this for another week now. <laughs> <laughs> and I even took a lot of, well, I took some of the cookies home and it still was a lot of crap. Yeah. We'll be having Mac and cheese for lunch. <laughs> My wife will be having her award winning chili. Yes. <laughs> so I don't know. How do you want to talk about this? Dude, I don't, I don't know how to get into it. We can just kind of just get into it. I mean, you guys hosted. Yes. Uh, hosted. You guys <laughs> um, had karaoke like we, you always do, which was awesome yeah uh collection tours we basically kind of i don't know it, how did you come up i mean i know what you know you guys but what was your plan what was was it everything you hoped for what was your plan for the winter social yeah it was everything that i hoped for um my goal was to have everything done by two mm-hmm. like making my mac and cheese having all the food ready so that i wasn't running around at four when everyone started to show up, getting things ready, like I could enjoy myself. All the pre-work was done by two and it was. And so I was able to just have fun. Um, I did. So I got the 3D printer and I did make like three inch Kenner logos. <laughs> yes. I made, I made five of them. This this was bigger than I thought it would be. I did too. Oh, my God. I hid five of them in my house. I hit them kind of like there was I had a Grogu, like the Mattel Grogu, who I dressed up in santa claus i got it from like a i think it was for like a three month old or something like that so i just put the 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 top half on and the hat and i hid the kenner logo behind that i hid one in my star wars christmas tree um i put one low in my star wars room so that you would have to crouch down look onto a specific shelf and kind of see it in the back um so i hit them everywhere and people were just scurrying trying to find this thing it was hilarious when we got down to that last one because what i did was we had the solo cups and i hid it in the red solo cup yeah it was more of a maroon but you know red solo is the classic cup and then they called it they called what red cup for uh, the solo movie that was the code word right 
they put it in the red cup, like the stack of them. So it was on the last last cup. And I was trying to tell people like it's in those two rooms where the food is. Um, it's not in the kitchen. And everybody was like turning my room over. They were going through the board games. They were going through um, furniture. They were opening drawers. They were looking behind things. And- Dude, I could totally see yours and Shannon's face when everybody was tearing your room up. It, yeah, was, it was just like <laughs> utter shock and chaos. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. It was you guys were like, like oh, my God. I mean, maybe I should give them a duster while they're at it because, <laughs> I mean, we did dust the place, but I'm sure there's corners where we didn't reach. And, yeah, that was a good hour and a half, people trying to find that stuff. And, and I, it was advantageous to come early because the easier ones, the, quote, easier ones were found first. Yeah. So. Yeah, my wife found that one in the Star Wars room, and she said she was just like on all fours and kind of was just glancing and caught a glimpse of that Kenner blue and found it. Yeah, people were looking for the K in the Kenner logo. Mm -hmm. Um, And I told people, no, you got to kind of change your perspective. Um, If you're standing close to it, there's a chance you won't see it. So you got to move far away, uh, maybe across the room and then see the blue. And and that's how Susan was able to find her. She just saw the hint of the Kenner blue. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was those were huge. People were freaking out about those. Yeah, it was bigger than I thought. Yeah, maybe we need to start doing something like that at every meetup. Maybe. Um, like next year, like if I do host the the meetup, do I try to learn 3D modeling and make a GASWC one or do I do the Kenner one again? I don't know. Or maybe just do something different. Yeah. Do well, something I'm different glad people every had show. Fun with that. Huh? I'm glad people had fun with that. Yeah, I was surprised. That was that was actually that's what I love about you guys is you do something silly like that and it, it always goes off. It, you know, people yeah. are always into it. Yeah. So that was fun to watch. <laughs> it was and awesome then, to watch, man. And then oh, I, I hid them. I hid them that morning. And then like a couple hours later, I'm like, okay, let's do a wrap up in my head where they are. And I completely forgot where one of them was. Oh, oh. And so I was just, going through each room trying to remember where i put it and then i found it it's the one that susan found i refound it and i'm like okay i know where they are now i'm good <laughs> but yeah that was fun it was fun to watch right and then uh, we did the cook off so i didn't eat the chili I yeah know you're I... partial because you had a chili in it but what'd you think of the chilies i didn't try the chilies either Okay. I'm not a bean. My wife yells at me because I, I love red beans and rice, but I don't like beans in my chili. Yeah. I only like beans in my red beans and rice, you know, because I know what I've cooked it. I know how to cook them. I know what beans they are. Um, so she always makes fun of me. And so I didn't try any of the chilies, but I did vote for my wife's chili. Okay. My so, wife, my wife did win the chili and it was funny because I kind of go up to her and I'm like, you won the chili. She's like, I shouldn't win the chili with the host. And I'm like, well, do you want to win or not? Yes, I want to win. Then I'm like, you won then. <laughs> she felt bad because she's the host. And so she's like, I shouldn't win this. But <laughs> dude, it was impartial. And, you know, yeah, no, I, I'm sure people knew who could kind of figure out who made what. But it you are just voting for what you like. Yeah. And I wasn't anticipating people because we um, bought little taster cups there was just maybe a half a cup you know if you're measuring cups right probably about a half a cup big and so we got these little tasting cups so everyone could taste the chili before they voted and then we bought bigger bowls so people could go back and get a full bowl after everyone's tasted and we made sure that because we we didn't know like how much chili would be coming um, if we had a lot of chili or what so we were preparing for not enough you know like right tasting not being enough and people were saying that they were full based on the tastings and all the other crap that we had the crackers and the bread and the cookies and so people didn't go back to get a full bowl yeah my wife brought probably half her chili back because she was in that same boat she didn't know how much she was she made a double batch of chili because she thought oh there's not going to be enough so just in case people want more yeah so she's like next time i'm only making a normal batch yeah so yeah that was good it was good um people got full they were having fun they were happy full bellies lots of laughs yeah um 
Yeah, and then the mac and you totally forgot to talk about mac and cheese, or did we talk about mac and cheese? We didn't talk about mac and cheese, so it was a chili and mac and cheese cook off because I don't like chili. But <laughs> I do like mac and cheese. There you go. And your wife won first yeah. place. And she said because she used my aunt's recipe and sent it to my aunt. And she was all excited and she like sent it to all her family, sent the pictures to all her family. She's like, Look, my mac and cheese won. And they're like, Really? <laughs> Is that for real? Did you really win at a Star Wars thing? And she's like, Yes, I did. That's, yeah, she did. You think that they they would at least understand, you know, it's Star Wars and it's me. So if it's all real, you know, we don't joke about Star Wars. No, that's not funny. <laughs> no, but now it's a uh, award winning mac and cheese. Exactly. She can tout it like that. And she's yes. And she's like, should I send the car, the the trophy to your aunt? I'm like, hell no. We're putting that in the trophy. We're in the room. <laughs> Yeah, she could say that she, they won a major award. <laughs> yeah, because I don't know if people remember, but you made a uh, a leg lamp version of the leg lamp, which was C-3PO's leg and then R2-D2's dome. And, yeah, uh, I went to um, Second Chance, and I bought a Power of the Force 2 C-3PO and a uh, just a cheap R2 dome. They repainted a bunch of things. So it wasn't R2-D2, but it's just a repaint of R2-D2. So... I had to take the R2 out to my garage and smash the body, which was very difficult for me to do because I don't even like opening my figures, let alone destroying them. Um, but yeah, I destroyed the body just to knock off the head and I glued it onto a C-3PO leg. But luckily C-3PO was easy, easily to detect. No, it was a removable limb C-3PO. So I didn't have to destroy the body. But the cool thing about that, C that C-3PO, it's, it has Kenner on the leg itself. Oh, wow. Yeah, so like with the uh, date stamp and stuff, it says Kenner. So it must have been some sort of old Kenner mold or something like that. I don't know. I should look into it. But did so. Kenner come through on the leg? I have. To yeah, it, it's there. Awesome. So yeah, I so I molded. So I made the mold, and then I made my own pour of the resin. It was like a plastic resin that turned white, and then I spray painted it silver, gold, and bronze for first, second, and third place. And then I made a special one for the sweater contest, and I let the admins of the group determine who was the winner. And Susan won because she had a sweater that looked exactly like the leg lamp poster, which was amazing. Yes. When I saw that that shirt, I'm like, this. I I took myself out of the voting because I'm mm -hmm. the host, and I you know I don't want to whatever. But uh, when I saw her sweater, I'm like, that has to win. That's oh, an yeah. amazing sweater. She, I think she's learned because she's getting. Uh... A trick to an ugly sweater contest is if it's homemade, it's you've got like a 50% chance better uh, yeah. to win. Uh, so I think she's learned over the past couple of years that we've done that. When, when you do a homemade sweater, you're going to win. Yep. Uh, but it was like between her and Terry because he had a wampa. He had like this really badass wampa sweater that had a koozie. Yeah. In it. <laughs> and he said he didn't think it was a wampa. Like it was not a Star Wars branded sweater. Mm -hmm. And I think it's supposed to be some sort of um, a, abominable snowman kind of thing, but it looks just like a wampa. So it worked and it was great. Yeah. Mandy wanted me to buy that sweater and I'm like, I'm not, no, I don't, I'm good. It's not going to get back here, but it's not going to get here before the uh, thing. And it's going to be probably too hot to wear it. So yeah, why it was bother? hot. It was a hot day yesterday to be in a sweater. Right. That's what I, that's what we talked about this last night. It's it's really hard in Georgia because I'm sure if, if you would have realized it was going to be that nice, you could have done stuff outside. But yeah, it could be nice like yeah, that or two degrees outside. You just never know. I had set up some games in the garage, but I think people just kind of stopped at the Star Wars room. They didn't realize there was stuff out in the garage. But we did take that one group photo, which I have to upload to his Facebook with everyone, almost everyone who came. Yeah. But it was it was a good time. Yeah. Uh, it was the author of the vintage collection book came and he brought a sample of the book, uh, not a sample. He brought the book. Nice. And when he opened that thing up, I had goosebumps. He was holding court for a while and everyone was crowding around him and checking out this book. It is beautiful. It is gorgeous. Just give it a couple more weeks. It's on its way. People. Yes. It's amazing. And if, uh, if you don't collect the vintage collection, you still might like this book because it's just, it's got everything in it. And uh, I wish I had more time to just dive into it. And I was looking through it and, and turning the pages. And I'm like, you know, in a couple of weeks, I'll be able to 
check this out for now. I'm just going to try to focus on the winter social and making sure that everything's going okay. Right. Because I know uh, Jerry's been talking to him and when he gets everything in, he's going to need some, you know, need some volunteers to help package everything. So I think Jerry's going to put out the call. So you'll probably get a preview of it. Yeah. I'm more than willing to help and do whatever I have to do to help them get that out because it's a great project. And, and unfortunately they've dealt with shipping delays. They added some things at the last minute. It is going to be the, def the, the definitive vintage collection book. It's worth the wait. Yeah. I love that. Um, uh, case he had for it, the slip case that looked mm -hmm. like the, uh, the old school, um, Kenner vinyl. Case holder. Yeah. yeah figure vinyl. holder. That was yep. awesome. Yeah. They really knocked it out of the park. Yeah. So I can't wait to help out. Right. I just lost my train of thought. Yeah, no, I was getting goosebumps <laughs> slipping through it. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it was great to, um, and he used to work at the Rebel Scum back in the day. So it was cool to kind of talk about that and mm -hmm. some of the stuff he's done for Rebel Scum. And, you know, it's just funny because I was thinking about it this morning. <clears throat> when I first moved to Georgia, I didn't know anyone. Right. And one of the first things that I did was order that vintage collection book because I moved down at the end of January and the Kickstarter started in March and cut to, you know, almost two and a half years later, the author is hanging out with me in my room. That's next amazing. To my, next to my vintage collection figures. It was, yeah. it was cool. It is crazy how stuff like that happens and it all happens because of the club or, you know, because uh, yeah. of Star Wars or because you make friends. And this is why we, we stress getting in the, into uh, the community, into your local community, because you never know what's going to happen. You yeah. know, just like in, 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 you know, just like with my love of Christian art, it's crazy to think that we're acquaintances and he, we know who we, ch you know, yeah. we could, we could sit down and have a conversation and talk and, and it's like, it all started because I liked one of his pieces and now I've got a whole bunch of them and he, you know, it, it's just, it's crazy how stuff like that works and you, you sit back and it just blows your mind. Yeah, absolutely. It's crazy. Small world. Yes. So. And so, yeah, we did that. We, there's a gift exchange. Do you want to talk about that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, let's with, talk about that because it, it 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 was really cool. Uh, what did you get and what did you give? Uh, I had Jerry uh, and I gave him a, because he's in the Greedo, but I found a the Greedo and Han Solo uh, in the cantina. So he's in the Greedo and the cantina. So it's like a double thing. I found mm -hmm. the uh, Christmas tree ornament from Hallmark. Oh, okay. Where the infamous shot first scene. Yeah, yeah. And I played it and I listened. You know, this is from like 2011. So when you play it, you only hear one gunshot. <laughs> I thought that was funny. That's funny. Or blaster bolt or whatever. Um, but they kind of go off at the same time. It, you could tell it's only one. Okay. Or to me, it looked like it sounded like only one. There was, but anyway, I picked that up for him and uh, I got. Um, I got a bunch of fets for my guy. Um, I forgot who my guy. Eric, was it Donnie? Yeah, your buddy. Doug? Doug. It was Doug. He was my uh, secret Santa. Okay. Or the one who picked me, which sucks. It doesn't suck, but it's kind of weird when you're the one that facilitates it. Yeah, you know. Because I know everybody's. Yeah. So, uh, but he got me a bunch of carded, like uh, some carded fets and a, and a Black Series Thrawn. Awesome. Yeah. It's right that up your cool. alley. Yep. And uh, who'd you get? I got Lewis. Lewis was uh, my secret Santa. So he got me some micro machines. He got me a um, box Planet Dagobah set, um, which is great. Uh, I don't have it in the box, and so now I do. I had the open version. And then he got me the Empire Strikes Back card uh, with the TIE Fighter, the Imperial uh, All Terrain attack transport i'll say that uh -huh. to avoid controversy and then the snow speeder so all carded it's great i can't wait yeah. to put those on display right and then who who'd you pick i had an orion which is, <laughs> which is <laughs> it's a challenge. always <laughs> so, when, I, when when i gave you an orion i was like womp womp yeah because what do you get the man who could get anything he wants and has gotten like incredibly rare pieces and but luckily, Tony, because uh, Narayan's into the Vader cases, and he's got a complete, not a complete, I don't know if it's complete or not, but he's got a pretty impressive collection of Vader cases still with their boxed base. 
and their baggies and the inserts and all that stuff. And Tony Johnson pointed me to Harvey's. They have a keychain, um, and it's a Vader case that flips open and it's got figures on the inside, not oh, wow. real figures. It's like a printed figure mm-hmm. set. It's like a sticker. It's basically a sticker <laughs> on the inside, an enamel, enameled sticker or whatever. And so I got him that. And then um, <clears throat> I know he's into customs. So I printed with my 3D printer the Boba Fett throne. And I wasn't sure if he'd want six inch or 3.75. So I printed both. Mm-hmm. And then I painted them, customized it a little bit because he, he does like the customization. And I messaged you because I was like, did, didn't Ryan ever pick up a custom throne? Because like I said, he's into customs. Right. And you're like, I don't remember him posting anything. And I had gone through his page, his most most Atlanta Cantina page, and I never saw a throne. And I did searches and all that stuff. So, luckily, I got that. Yeah, I was able to do that for him. So, yeah, awesome. And then he, now Ryan's always real, uh, real thoughtful at Christmas time too. So he 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 gave an, all the uh, admins and mods, or at least the admins, uh, he given us all little gifts and. Uh, he had given me that show that the show y'all went to ice a couple of months ago and they had a beer can swag set, like what, 20 beer cans in it. Yeah. And uh, he gave me, gave, gave me one of those. And then he gave me a has no talent. Does a little, did a little wampa mini wampa. So I get me to get me that too. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. He got me the chess, chess, you cat. Cheshire you cat. It was Cheshire cat, but it's chess, you the cat. It's a celebration archive, celebration Chicago archive piece, and so yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, so I'm ecstatic to have that. Cool. And then Lucas, Lucas, one of our listeners. Yes, our buddy Lucas. He came he to came... my, yeah, he came to my meetup, the the pre party at my house. He, he messaged me like a couple of uh, days ago, and I was like, okay, cool, you know, come on over. And then he shows up at my house and his his avatar on Facebook, him all clean cut from like two years ago. And he shows up looking like a mountain man. And I'm like, Lucas? He, oh, yeah, guy? it's an old picture. Yeah. Time to update that, Lucas. <laughs> but it was really weird because the first words when he first met both of us was like, it's so weird seeing you and yeah. hearing your voice because he's he's been a loyal listener for, for a while because he's in his truck a lot. And um, he showed up at my house and he's like, I've got something for you it's half of it so I, i'm i'm assuming he has the second half but he had done a, a stormtrooper and he painted it up like ted for yeah. bill and ted so it's just it's awesome looking and he's like i got another one for you so i'm assuming it's bill to be the counterpart but uh i guess i'll see what happens when when it shows up but he's like but I, he, huh he painted it with like the kenner colors right so right it's he got painted, like the so, yellow half the long shorts i guess yeah so it's it's a paint it's a kenner deco vest. yeah, yeah. With the vest and everything, it looks great. Uh, and then I went to open it this morning to look at it, and he taped the box shut and autographed it. So I guess it's going to stay in the box. But it looks yeah. great. I'm, I'm I'm ecstatic for it. So it kind of it it fits in with my whole motif. So that was that was awesome. And I know he gave you something that was pretty awesome too. Yeah, he customized the Mandalorian. He added chrome to the chromed version of the Mandalorian. It looks just like. Like if they vac metalized the Mandalorian's wow. armor, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. And not only was I very touched by that, I was just very impressed because I have tried on some of the projects that I've done to try to get that chrome finish. Uh-huh. And it either comes out kind of shiny or it gets, if you spray it with like a gloss coat, it gets really um, faded. It uh-huh. kind of loses its gloss. So yeah, he gave me that and it's incredibly impressive. And I was very um touched by that so thank you lucas and yes you didn't have to do that oh it was awesome it was good he also got me some more um, um micro machines yeah he, he was saying he was like he called you or was messaging you and hey do you have these have you seen these and he was yeah. like Shoo, he doesn't have them <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah i think you're you're gonna be uh pretty pretty well done on micro machines here soon yeah i got like a couple left there's the Shadows of the Empire. I need the third one with the Outrider and, and Dash Rendar and um, Hound's Tooth, which is Bosk's ship. And then there's the expensive ones, which you need to save up for those. Yeah, there's expen- which, which ones are expensive? <clears throat> there is. 
So you were talking about the, trans- the mini transforming play sets. Uh huh. I don't remember what set it is though. They did the first three sets. So you have one. I have the second one. There's three and four. And then there's a set beyond that. There's one with like salacious crumb. And I think that one goes for a pretty, pretty okay. piece of. Oh, the there's little a, mini, the mini, the mini heads. Set. Yeah. Yeah. There's also a box set with all of them. And I think there's an exclusive one in that set, which goes for like three, 400 bucks. Jeez. Which it, it's a lot of money, but it's not a lot of money in the scheme of things. Right. In the scheme of Star Wars. And, you know, we're 20 years out. So maybe this might start increasing in value. Who knows? Probably not. But it, it takes one person, you know, to say something. And the next thing you know, it skyrockets. Right. But it, yeah, like you were saying, the twenty-year rule. It's funny, all the power of the Force Two stuff starting to come back. Yeah, yeah. The, there was a company making socks based on Power of the Force Two Deco, yeah, the card back Deco. And uh, yeah, it's twenty years later, so people are getting into it, and the, the nostalgia is starting to kick in, and the hard copies, the pre-production prototype stuff, that stuff is all starting to rise. That's the stuff people didn't want because they didn't care about the muscle-bound Darth Vader. And uh, the rip shirt, Luke Skywalker, Schwarzenegger Skywalker. Right. And so, but yeah, now the nostalgia is starting to kick in and that stuff is starting to fetch a, a pretty penny. Damn. <clears throat> and it's also, when you think about it, like Hasbro doesn't do that anymore now. Like they don't make the prototypes like they used to. There's no wax casting. There's no um, pre- presentation boards. It's all done through PowerPoint now. So they don't have that uh, tech. It's a tactile, but the actual stuff that you would hold in pre-production. Right. All done through ZBrush and computer stuff now. So like they stopped making chromalins because it was all digital proofs. And, and so the power of the force Two kind of phased. Uh, there was a transition period there between how they used to do things in Kenner and how they do things today in Hasbro. So that's kind of that last range of that kind of stuff. Right. So. Yeah, because somebody was saying, yeah, because now they're 3D printing stuff. So, you, yeah, you don't have the wax sculpt. You don't, it, it's all 3D printed now. Right. It's all so resin you did lose that. Speaking of 3D printing, you gave me a really awesome Wild Stallion sign. Yeah. <laughs> I painted <laughs> that. Yeah. That was great. So, yeah, hopefully to, it'll go somewhere there. Yeah, I have to figure out what I'm going to do with it. It'll probably go with my Bill and Ted or my Ted Stormtrooper somewhere. There you go. Yeah. I have to just figure out if I have, you know, it's getting to where I'm going to have to get a new case here soon. Uh oh. I know. Darn. Yeah, I need to get a new case too. I need to get more pre production of micro machines. I wish I could find more than the sa- sign off samples. Right. Are sign off samples prototypes or are they just early runs? I think they're just, geez, I would consider them prototypes because I think prototype is just a big umbrella. Yeah that term that we use for anything that's not production it's got to be the last step in in production or prototyping yes i approve of this go right and then it goes into production so i guess it is pre-production but yeah i don't know anything else with the winter social i'm thinking it ended ended earlier than i thought people yeah that was kind of a a little bit of a bummer but i think what what's going on now is because it gets dark at five o'clock at yeah. seven o'clock eight o'clock people are like all right i gotta go it's late it was kind of like the natural course of the the evening it didn't feel like anyone overstayed it felt like the you know the party was starting to wrap down a little bit people were started leaving and it felt it felt good yeah it's like i had everyone over for dinner yeah no it i thought it i thought it was perfect the timing was right uh i think we we should have got like an 11 o'clock crew picture because <laughs> oh yeah i totally forgot about that it was you know you think about it once you get home and we're like because there is uh there's a the new york club has a midnight crew so everybody that stays up till midnight gets a patch or whatever and yeah or you get a whole punch they got punch no, card a... or something oh okay um, i thought it was just a patch you got but maybe they changed the system it's something and then i oh i think it's both you get a patch and you get a punch card and then once you get so many of them you get like another piece of swag so mm. Maybe we need to do something silly and do like an 11 p.m. or a 10 p.m. club. <laughs> Let's see if I can make that. <laughs> but yeah, because we it was it was what it got to the point last night. We were sitting in your cul-de-sac talking and it's like, all right, I got to go because it's it's late and we're going to sit here all night talking. Yeah. 
Yeah, we were walking down the driveway. I was like, what time is it? It's only 1030. I'm like, oh my gosh, what the heck happened? <laughs> we got old. We got old. How'd that happen? Yeah. And it started at four. We, how many, was there a lot of people there at four? Because I know we showed up at like a 430, 445. Yeah, about at four, Tim, Susan, Lewis, and April showed up. Nice. So, and then they started looking right for their Kenner thing. Right. <laughs> they were like, <laughs> I'm going to get that Kenner. Kenner. Yeah. Um, but we hung out here because, you know, you're looking at the clock and it's like the same thing that, that at the fall crawl because you're sitting there talking and you're watching the clock and you're like, I don't want this to end because this is so, you know, I'm having so much fun. Uh, but I know we need to get on to the next thing. And I think we left here, like ended up leaving here about 4.30 once we packed everything up and kicked everybody out. Uh, Cause at like a quarter to four, Mandy's like, I still got to show off my room. So everybody went up there and saw her stuff. And uh, then we ended up at your house, like 4.30, 4.45. Yeah. Note to self, don't plan two meetups within two weeks of each other. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's just kind of how it happened though. And then yeah. I think once we looked at the calendar, we went crap it's too soon yeah it was and then like i can't do it next week because that's my corporate holiday party so i had to have been this past weekend for right because then anything else is too close to the holiday is and but yeah it worked out well and we, everyone had fun and it was a good time yeah no it was awesome i enjoyed it good. yeah that would be my only thing and i'm trying to keep that in mind going into next year was uh you know, trying to watch how we space things out, but it is hard because we do have people that are like, I can't do it this weekend, but I can do it this weekend. And then, yeah. but I think with the, even if we do it separate, it'll still be all right. If we have them two or three weeks apart. Sound like there's thunder outside just now. I did get an alert that there was rain. I don't know. There's rain. I'm down in my basement. Like that's under like legitimately underground. So I have no clue what's going on. I'm kind of underground, but not really. I'm in a bowl, but yeah, it sounded like a dumpster banging or thunder or something like that. So. That's probably thunder. Awesome. Crazy weather. Dude, it, it's Georgia in December. Welcome. Thanks. But yeah, it was a good time. Good yeah. fun. I'm up for it next year, but if we want to do something else like a, a brewery, if I could say that word this morning or like a ballroom <laughs> or something like that it's totally fine yeah i'm really hoping that we can do something like that next year because you know but i don't know i guess we'll have to see how things are going the only weird thing is it's it's a little bit more formal and like it's cool to be able to see someone's collection right and so when you don't have that element i mean that to me is a part of the meetup is you know one half is meeting the people and seeing the people. The other half is seeing the collection and all the pieces and stuff like that. So I don't know. I mean, it is, we'll, we'll figure it out later. Yeah. I mean, we could do like a double thing, but then you're just, you know, where you're the party's at a brewery, but then you can meet, you know, do another collection tour or something, but we got a year to figure that crap out. Yep. Nothing we need to do today. No, we need to recover today. Yeah. Well, like the Ryan says, we have, uh, Toy Lana and the uh, summer social well, Toy Lana and celebration where we can even think about anything. Yeah. Toy Lana do this art project. I got to, maybe I'll oh, post yeah. something this week to just remind people, Hey, we can, we're accepting people for this. Right. Have you gotten a good uh, turnout for that so far? Um, I could pull it up real quick. I think we have about five or six. That, that's a pretty, I, I'd like to have about 10, but I think five or six is, is right in the honey hole. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Awesome. No, I think so, that's yeah. about right. I'd like, yeah. If we can raise a thousand bucks for children's, I'd be happy with that. Yeah. Because we did that last year. Or yeah, was it? no, two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. That is thunder, by the way. Is it thunder? Yeah. Awesome. Yay. I guess I'm not doing anything outside today. No, more excuse to just sit and veg. Yeah. I got to move a couple tables, but other than that, I plan on doing nada today. Right. I'll probably take a shower. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> Put all my stuff up. Oh, wow. Yeah. There it is. I just heard it. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> it came from my place and it moved <laughs> to yours and you can hear it. Yeah. 
Wow. And I've got headphones in. So yeah, it was loud. Yeah. All right, sir. Well, right, uh, I'll talk to you next week. Have a good week. Hopefully yes. your um, piece from China arrives. They're, they're saying Actually, like February. So I don't know. Uh, who knows? Who knows? They say it like that and then it shows up in a week. We're putting together an end of the year show, a wrap up of 2021 to to just say how things went for us. But we want to hear from you. So if you're inclined, you know, pull out your voice recorder and let us know what your favorite pickups were. Anything from 2021, what your goals were. Did you achieve your collecting goals, how things went and uh, what you're looking for in 2022? Send those to what smugglers galaxy at gmail.com. Yep. We, yeah, yeah. Any, any cool pickups you had, any cool experiences you had, anything you want to say about 2021, send it in. We'll use it in a, in a, in a, uh, upcoming show. Yeah. We'll put together like a wrap up show and, uh, yeah, it'd be cool to hear from you because we have a lot of people who listen to us and, um, we get tired of hearing ourselves talk. So let's hear you talk a little bit. Uh, let us know how things went. Right. So yeah, y'all have a, uh, yeah. And also like us on Instagram. I'm starting to post stuff on Twitter, not the much, but like us on Facebook, please leave a review. Uh, you know, it does help because it is cool when you put up star Wars podcasts, you see our stuff starting to come up, creep up the, uh, the chain on, uh, Spotify and stuff. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's working. So thanks. Thanks for listening. Thanks for everything you guys do for the, for the show. It's just, it, it, yeah, it's cool when you're like when you look and you see that people are out there out there listening to us. So thanks, definitely okay. thanks for listening. This is the way. This is the way. Mm-hmm.